Thank you all for coming on this warm and rainy day, a little different for February, uh, but kind of uh, a tale of two different games for us this last week. Really pleased with how we came out against Denver. Uh, I thought that our consistency from a, an energy perspective, a, de a discipline and a detail perspective was very, very uh, consistent. And, and what I mean by that is uh, the third quarter had been a struggle for us uh, up until or in the last few games. And for us to be able to come out and still play the intense and urgent defense that we we did when we weren't making field goals is a huge step forward for, for our kids and the, the locked in and the engagement that we demonstrated. So I was very pleased with that. And, you know, collectively, I thought at the, by the end of the game, I thought Sarah and Taylor really handled the ball well and managed the clock, managed that uh, last five minutes of the fourth quarter uh, to put us in a position to, uh, to be successful and to win the basketball game. So I was very pleased with that win. Uh, and then we come in on Saturday for Senior Day, a great day to honor uh, those three young ladies. And we just ran into a very, very talented uh, IUP UI team who at the time had won eight of the last nine games. Uh, now they're nine out of their last 10, I believe. Uh, and they just have a very dynamic um, inside outside threat in Lawrence and Rogers. And so they played very, very well. Um, and that's something that, uh, you know, we'll get to. It was a, a difficult night for us at that point, though. Any updates on uh, Tyra Spencer's finger that she injured in warm ups? <laughs> she dislocated her finger in warm ups and she's fine. We needed to see a doctor before we could play. So we're good. To see out of your team these final two games, what, what would make it uh, so that you feel comfortable heading into that turn? Mm -hmm. I think what what our kids thrive off of, and when we regardless of the outcome of the game, but when we are competitive and playing for each other, uh, I think regard, again, regardless of the outcome, we feel like we're getting better and we are getting better. So the consistency to have the details and have the discipline on the defensive end, really the energy on the defensive end, when we're doing that and then covering for each other and switching or hedging or playing in the gap, you know, whatever the situation calls for, when we're all locked in, uh, we continue to improve and then shots fall on the other end and, and whatnot. So I think that our defensive intensity is something that we need to uh, tighten up. And if we can do that well, we'll be feeling good about ourselves at the end of the week. I feel like Sarah has broken through the wall a little bit now that she's gotten back to what, what she, the way she was playing in early January, especially on the offensive end. I think so. I think she's seen the ball go through the hoop. I think she you know, just has a, a little bit more a, a sigh of relief or a little bit of the pressure has broken. Um, you know, and she's a kid that she kind of chuckles at herself. You know, she was not pleased with her uh, halftime statistics at the Denver game, and then she's the first one to kind of chuckle about it. But then she comes out and has a really great fourth quarter, which was needed by our team and certainly part of the leadership. You know, she was part of the leadership that fourth quarter. Uh, and so if those are the examples that I see that, yes, yeah, she's kind of is over that hump and, and playing maybe not quite freshman basketball anymore, but it's transcended a little bit into something a little bit more mature, a little bit more experienced. Playing on the road, not really easy for any team, but can you put something on just specifically for this team, the difference between home and the road this year? With so many young kids, I'm not sure that there's something you can put your thumb on because sometimes it's great for us to be on the road, away from the distractions, away from um, – the, just away from the distractions. Other times it's great for these young kids to be at home and be in a routine of going to class and practice at the same time every day and, and whatnot. So this time, I mean, we have no choice. This is going to be our longest road trip and we're, you know, we're going to, we're going to make it be a fun road trip at the same time to not be stuck in the monotony of the, oh, we're on the road, blah, 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 blah. Um, so, you know, it's, it's keeping individual, having individual conversations and having, you know, keeping individual kids in, in good places, regardless if you're at home or away. But at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's what we can control and, and how we come out. It's not about where we play or who we play. It's, it's playing to our level of expectations. You do make a road trip more fun. <laughs> well, more uh, meals on the road. Uh, and, and so being able to, uh, you know, order desserts, being able to choose the restaurants, you know, where they feel that they have some ownership and they have some say in the matter really gives them, as young people, uh, energy. And, and, you know, we'll go see a movie. We'll go, you know, we'll do things that are fun and, and more off the court type of thing so that when we're on the court that we, we do have that focus and that energy and then that's our time. But there are many other times on the road that it's the kids' time. And then they, they all, I think all kids thrive on that, especially when you're gone for a duration. Conference tournament is for it. You know, we have we've talked about it being in a very good spot, and that was one of our goals this year. Um, at the same time, 
you know, I am one who I'm not going to speak before it's actually written in stone. So we haven't had a, a big conversation about it. Um, but when that becomes our reality, you know, that's another thing we'll be able to, to really, you know, talk about in a very positive way. Um, and so, yes, it, it, inside, I can see that this is possibly going in that right direction. And, and for that, and for the determination that these kids have had, I'm, I'm very, very proud of them for that. So on Saturday, they chewed you up in the paint uh, when they came here uh, to Fargo. Uh, you mentioned defensive intensity. What do you do X's and O's wise to try to keep them from getting to the basket and, and getting those easy putbacks? I think it's it's uh, containing the basketball. But what really hurt us was the off their offensive rebounds and getting additional points uh, or get additional opportunities. And that's something that their guards rebounded expe extremely well against us. And, and so that has to be an area of concern uh, in both games, limiting uh, Omaha and Oral Roberts offensive possessions, um, but that was something that Oral Roberts did um, at a very high level. <laughs> Lauren, you're at the end of your third year. This, are you, where are you at with your big picture? Are you close to that? I know the wins haven't been there, but are you close to when you took over being now in your third year you're wrapping up? Yeah, that's a good question. And in some respects, I don't want to think about that because the season's not over, but then the the other half of my brain, you know, wants to make a, a clear evaluation. And I think from a recruiting perspective, we are very much so going in the right direction. And I am pleased with the progress that the players on our team have made, but also the recruiting strides and in some of the signees and, and whatnot that we have. Um, so I, I am happy with that. Um, as far as the on-court wins and, and the culture and whatnot, we're still a work in progress. And I am very pleased with somebody like uh, Brianna Jones, the leadership that, she, that she's brought in and, and how she's helped change the culture, especially these young freshmen, Sarah Jacobs and Riley Newdell, the way that their voice is, is carrying more in the locker room and the culture is changing in that respect as well. So there's a lot of aspects when you look at it and it's not just the, the wins and losses. Uh, and so I think the other stuff has, the recruiting, the culture has to change and then the results, the results come. So I am, I am very happy with the behind the scenes stuff, and I'm confident that the wins and losses and, and you know the stuff that y'all see is not far away. Is that a longer fix than you thought that possibly for the recruiting to get to the on air results? <laughs> on air, that's a, that, that, that's a good one for you guys. Yeah, no, that that makes sense. Um, you know, I, I don't think anybody really knows the the magnitude of the project until you are in it for a little while. Um, so to say, did I think this was going to happen faster? We all wanted to, absolutely. Uh, but I'm not disappointed with the pace at the same time. Uh, you know, you get your feet in and, and you see kind of where some of the holes are and and some of the the strengths that your the, the squad you have that you inherited, you know, does have. And you know, and we had. Brooke Lamar graduate and you know then we're certainly all of a sudden in a very different situation yet again um so you know I'd be lying if I said I wanted it to happen sooner because I think we all do um but I'm not disappointed at this at, at the same time